Jam on Toast! Hey there everybody, welcome to Jam. I'm Cameron and today the toast is to Magi, Labyrinth of Magic. Before we get into the review, this is a response to SourceFed Nerds Movie Club. In no way, shape, or form makes any type of submission. Permission to use this video is not given unless as directed, which is like you should for all clubbers, their hashtag or a name that they designated underneath their face. I've got a longer video about it here. The short sell on this is that a couple guys in search of power and treasure end up being dragged into an inner kingdom struggle. Go. What I love of this one is people powering the magical items versus the magical items powering the people. My hate for this, it really feels like she's just fucking with you. Uh, it, it goes into this very lighthearted, nonsensical thing about a couple of guys just trying to get by, and one guy finds this other kid eating his melons, and then he gets in trouble, incurs the big debt. Like, then they start, they go to like a titty bar or something at some point. It throws this weird mixed message of, like, objectifying women in there because not only do they do that, but they have this whole discussion about setting uh, this girl free from being a slave and it, that kind of pops up every now and again throughout the entire thing of the like what human rights are and what the right is of, of, of objectifying it it's really kind of weirdly meta that they go through that but it sets a weird precedence for the show because it's kind of all over the place the rules kind of start you in one way and then they turn and they run that way for a little while. The whole thing with the magic and the way the gin work, it's very confusing because you don't know if they're just magical embodiments or if they're their own sentient person or if the magic is just essentially an ether that flows through everybody and certain people can harness it better. And it's got very good exhalation, which is typical in anime that things get bigger and bigger and bigger. But the whole time that's happening, like we keep changing the rules and what our understanding is of these things that we've established. So it becomes a little taxing. But it's probably the same reason I kept watching the show because I wanted to try to figure it out. Let's get to the categories. Aesthetics. This show does a great job of animating the characters. They're very representative. You can tell kind of who, what's going on. They kind of wear the same outfits the entire time, which is kind of nasty, but it's anime, so they have to shower a lot less, I guess. Point is, it gives you symbolism for the character, and you don't have to think about, like, oh, who's that? There are nominal points where they change the outfits to give certain appearances and looks, and that's why they do it. So they go back to their normal things. And you can see that with some of the magical items as well. They do a great job of using background music to kind of emphasize the scenes and they do that weird little anime trope every now and again where like they do full body emotes that just don't match any of the other stylization. I'm not a huge fan of that but some of that actually gets really well. Like when Eldin is trying to cheer up Morjana in the way they say Alibaba's name because it doesn't come out Alibaba it comes out Alibaba or it comes out Alibaba-kun, Alibaba-sama, Alibaba-san. It was very entertaining throughout the whole thing just hearing this. Brennan and I watched it all in subtitles, which says a lot to it because I don't like reading my shows very often. More thematic of the overall season is that they show the examples of light and dark super well. When they start using more magic, they're representing that very well, especially when they have like shields and you've got to be able to see through it a certain way. Definitely did a very good job of that. But while that's all done very well, the look of the anime is not what's going to make me remember this. It's going to be the events going on. Aesthetics gets an 88. Character development. Granted, I didn't say it was a little taxing, but the development in this is all over the place, and you really go on a ride. It keeps you interested in the characters about what's going on, what's happening between them. Every time you get a new character, there's new interaction between all the existing characters. Super interesting to see what happens with each character, because as the story goes on, each character gets its own little development. Each character stays relevant throughout the entire series. And it's not just like, hey, I'm going to watch the hero grow bigger and go on. Everybody who you care about is important, and everybody really matters. And that's very important to do in a story, especially of this scale. Because you kind of just start carefree in one city of the desert, we end up in a dungeon, we end up blowing up to like the whole of the desert, and then we start looking at kingdoms and alliances between kingdoms and empires, and oh my gosh, it's all blowing up! Character development gets a 90. Storyline. While I don't quite get on board with a lot of the premise for some of this, the story is pretty good. Let's suffice to say this is not a world I would have written, but it's pretty good. It's definitely entertaining. It's interesting. It's all structured really well. I'm expecting to see things that happen come into play more and more and more. 
everything that they bother to establish, like new magical items and stuff, comes back. They don't just get a new magical item and then forget to use it for the rest of the time. The sad part seems to be that the storyline gets crunched because of the advances of the enemy, and that's not really a spoiler. Once you start watching it, you realize we're not going to get to the stuff we're talking about. Something bad's going to happen here soon. Sure enough, that's what happens, and that's what's exciting about it. But if you're not, because we did get another series, Magi 2, storyline gets an 88. Compulsion. Now, I've already stated that this show kind of screwed with me. I thought it was going this way, we take a right, we run that way for a while, and then I'm trying to get a handle on how magic works and what magic is and why magi are special, and we get some great exposition into that. And then, like, we take a left turn, and there's this other thing, and it's it's very hard to build anything concrete to put the next layer on. So it feels like you're starting over, and that you can jump in at any point and have most of the story, because, hey, we only spent two episodes building up to the current story version as it is. That's annoying, and this was subtitled, which I also found a little bit annoying. I'm a dubs guy, so while I definitely thought this was worth the time I put into it, I'm not super excited to have to read the whole time. So if Magic 2 is subtitled, then I'm probably going to give it a pass for now. Compulsion gets an 80. Now if you total all that up, you get an average of 86.5. For my review, I've got to say, give this a try and see if this is your speed. But don't watch just the first two episodes. You really need to watch like the first four episodes or so to really get a handle on what this show really is. Because it seems like the first two episodes are purposely misleading to build up stuff later in the story. But yeah, it was a good time. I think that's it for me. I'm Cameron. If you don't like me, fight me. If you want to see anything else we're up to, go ahead and click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels.